Um, my name's uh, Fiona Staff. I'm one of the assistant group secretaries. Um, and for the purposes of this meeting, I've got two roles. Um, I actually am responsible in my own right for dealing with um, HR policy negotiations. And um, I'm also covering um, the, the logistics, if you like, of the Olympics um, for Lewis while he's off sick. Um, I'm going to just give you a brief of where we've got to with the negotiations that have been taking place. Um, some, sometime in the middle of last year, um, CSEP, which is uh, the Civil Service um, Employee Policy Team, um, issued some orig the, the original guidance that they put out. And they said that for each department, they could um, tailor it and use the bits of it that were appropriate for their department, um, and so on and so forth. Um, we worked with um, management in um, uh, HR policy to produce three sets of temporary guidance, one to cover TNS, one to cover attendance, and one to cover disability. Um, the um, three different um, policies had their own issues. Um, we were broadly content with the policies that they'd come up for, the, um, for disabled staff, which would include up to include um, the use of DAL if needed. Um, we were broadly happy with the plans for travel and subsistence um, that, you know, that would make sure that nobody was going to be out of pocket for any additional travel that they had to, um, to, had to undertake. We weren't very happy with the attendance policy that they came up with um, and there were a couple of reasons for this, primarily around the use of enforced periods of annual leave, which was something that we felt very strongly that we didn't want to get into. Um, the other problem that we had with the policies were that anything that the department deemed um, successful, they would then consider to bring in on a permanent basis, and that led us to have some concerns. And part of the reason for that was those concerns was because we were told by the official side that they could not negotiate with us, they could only consult with us, because it was something that had come from the Cabinet Office, not from the department. And so we were concerned that they would potentially want to bring in changes to our policy without any kind of negotiation. When the GEC met um, beginning of this year, we um, noted those policies. We felt that there was sufficiently beneficial stuff in there around the TNS and the disability side of things to not want to completely throw it out. But we couldn't possibly agree it based on the problems that we had with, with attendance. Now, before I even had a chance to convey that to the uh, official side, CSEP then issued some amendments to their policy. And these amendments were in relation to what, is constitu what constitutes mandatory and voluntary changes and also time credits. Now, what CSEP have now proposed is that only situations where people um, have to change location or incur extra expenses um, only when they are mandatory will they be able to claim any recompense for any any uh, for being out of pocket, um, and that led us to a huge concern around well, okay, who decides what's mandatory and who can who decides what's voluntary, and possibly the thing that was going to affect most people is that they have said there will be no time credits for delays caused by additional travel, delays and journeys, and so on and so forth. Now. Um, as I understand it, CSEP have gone out to the various different departments with these proposals and they were due to have a cons consultation meeting on the 12th of March. Now I'm still waiting for the outcome of that consultation meeting and some info. I've, I've spoken to, or I've e emailed Chris Weeks, who's my contact in the department, to find out what was decided at that meeting. So that, that's basically where we are with the policy side of it. Um, the planning side of it, as, as Tim's already mentioned, there's been the questionnaires, there's been the test days. I know that there were some issues coming out of that because people found it, uh, they couldn't log into the, the um, forum afterwards to um, log how they'd, they'd found it, but I think they seem to have been sorted out. Um, there was an Olympics planning meeting on the 14th, I think, um, which Colin Edwards and Deluxford went to on my behalf. Um, we have now persuaded them that included in the tag mandatory will be anything that is undertaken to try and meet the 50% reduction in footfall, which should mean that anybody that has to incur extra travel or change office or whatever should be recompensed now for that, that, that they won't be excluded from that. 
Um, clearly, if you're not impacted at all by the Olympics, but you decide that you want to work from home for a week or work in another place for a week, then that's a whole other issue. And I say that because obviously this isn't just going to affect London. Um, we also um, made some allies actually with the official side from various different businesses who I think are possibly as frustrated as the union is about how this consultation has, or hmm, sort of consultation has, has gone. Um, we still do have an issue over the time credits. That hasn't been resolved. Um, and I should say, as I say, it's not just London that's going to be affected by the Olympics. Obviously, there are going to be places, Cardiff springs to mind, where they're going to have massive problems because any event that takes place in Cardiff will result in the entire city centre being shut down. Trains, tubes, buses, roads, everything. So a little nod to our colleagues that are, that are outside of London that this is going to impact on them as well. Um, so there's, there's a few things now that we need to we need to do. The um, one of the things that we have got a problem with, and I will be honest about this, is that some of this is outside the control of, of Revenue and Customs Group. Because of the fact that this has come from CSEP, which um, is dealt with by our national union, we have a problem in trying to find out from the national union about what's going on and what's <coughs> happening. And I, and I mention that because you know, I don't see that anybody in our group should take responsibility for something that's outside of control. And we are pushing hard to find out what's happening. <clears throat> but I don't have the capacity, I don't have the ability to go and negotiate <coughs> directly with the Cabinet Office myself. Otherwise, believe me, I would be knocking on their door telling them what I think. Um, the, the, there is another major issue that, um, that has cropped up. I don't know if anybody's seen on the news now, but now a third transport union has rejected the pay offer for working during the Olympics. Now, we could be in a position where potentially we could have strike action on the tubes during the Olympics. And I think if that happens, then I think all bets are off because there's no way that we can, we can um, predict what's going to happen. We have no way of knowing um, what the impact of that is going to be of, of staff getting into work, although I have a guess. Um, we have um, a meeting next week, or the week after the 3rd of April it is, of all the reps from London that were identified as being part of the um, uh, email group that we set up. Um, we're going to be looking at various different things that we, we need to consider, things like um, asking management whether staff can use that time during the Olympics to work at home on learning projects. Um, things like visiting staff, front-loading their visits to before the Olympics so they can spend some time at home writing up those visits um, when, when the travel disruptions are going to be taking place. Um, two things that from a union point of view I think we need to consider is we are looking at, and I'm, you know, there's no guarantees on this, but we are looking at potentially a draft letter that staff can issue to their managers to say that they are undertaking whatever it is, be it a, a loss of time or whatever under duress, to protect them if, if, we, um, if, if that needs to take place. And I also think that all branches need to think about uh, putting motions of urgency to uh, conference, particularly in relation to this last um, attempt by CSEP to completely unseat the plans that we've had in place. So that, that's where we are. Um, there's still a lot of work for us to do. I think um, however much planning is put in place, and I applaud what, what the department's done in terms of, of looking at you know, what the travel disruptions are going to be, looking at ways to try and manage the disruption. But I think, unfortunately, whatever, whatever plans we have in place, it's only going to take um, an overloading of a train, a driver not turning up, um, a bus breaking down, or whatever it might be, to throw the whole thing into chaos. And I think that's where we have a problem um, because there is no capacity for management to now say, OK, you can have the time back for that or we, we can look at another plan. So I think, you know, the best played less, best played plans, it doesn't work out that way, potentially if the, uh, the tube strike takes place. So um, there's still an awful lot of work to do, but rest assured your reps and asset group are working really hard to make sure we can make this as painless as possible for everyone. Thank you. <laughs>